Hey guys, it's Ricardo back here on the Watch With Us channel, and I'm finally reviewing a watch we got in from the brand Minase, and this is their DeVito. Now, a little history on Minase. Minase is actually part of a larger brand, larger company called Kioa. Um, that company started in 1963, and they have a history of producing cases, bracelets, and finishing watches for some of the larger brands, even some of the larger Swiss brands. But one of their biggest things in their history was their production of their own step drill, which allowed them to carve out and bore out the holes needed for many watches in terms of putting in the crown of the watch. So with that history, as I said, starting in 1963, in 2005, they decided to take all their know-how, take all their knowledge in terms of creating cases, and they decided, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create our own watch brand. And that's how we come about with Manase. Even in the new brand, you still see some touches and some nods to the history of the larger company. So if you zoom in here, you'll see their logo on the crown, and that logo is representative of the step drill that they created and that they're known for. And that produces such fine craftsmanship in a lot of the cases the larger company, Kiowa, creates. So that's a little history on the brand. Um, in terms of the watch brand itself, Minaze, the brand has currently four collections. You have the seven windows, the five windows, the horizon, and of course, the watch we have here, the DeVito. So I'm gonna take this opportunity now to dive into the specs on this amazing and unique watch we have here today. So in terms of specs for the Manes de Vito, we have a case which measures in at 40.5 millimeters from left to right. You have a lug to lug from down here to the top of 48 millimeters. Case thickness comes in at 12 millimeters, which includes this beautiful boxed sapphire crystal on the front of the watch. In terms of the strap, you have a nice rubber strap, which measures in 25 millimeters here near the case and down to 20 millimeters here where you have a, this the point clasp. In terms of actual lug width, the lug width of this watch is 20 millimeters. Now, if you focus in here on the back of the watch, you'll see the 20, ETA 2824-2 movement inside, has a nice bit of perlage, and around that movement, underneath this sapphire crystal here, you'll see some information on the watch. So in the top left-hand corner, you'll see the actual model number of the watch. Down here in the bottom left, you'll see it says HIZ series. On the top right, you'll have the serial number of the watch, and you'll see it says Japan made. You also have the logo signed on the underside of the rubber strap. Going back to the front of the watch, the dial is this beautiful dimpled sunburst dial. So it almost seems like there are little squares on the dial. Gives it this really nice look. Sometimes it looks smooth but then sometimes when the light hits it just right, you can see the little dimples on that dial. Now you have hands which have a brushed surface, that's your hour and your minute hand, with polished sides. So you'll see here on the light, it's hitting 
that polish side. Both your minute and your second hand actually curve down towards the edges of the dial. And you'll have loom there on your hour and your minute hand. In terms of indices, there are two types here on the dial. You have your one, two, four, five, seven, eight, and 10 and 11 indices, basically the same. While your 12, three, six, nine indices are a little bit larger. And in order to account for the size, you'll see that the minute markers around the larger indices um, are actually aren't there. So the way you would read it here at six o'clock is that white right in the middle of the indices is considered 30 minutes. And the right edge of that is considered 29, while the left edge is considered 31. You also have this date window that's incorporated and kind of cut out into the dial. So you'll see the top surface, the top surface of the dial there. Then the date is kind of cut out of a sub dial, you could say. Um, and you could see it within there with that arrow pointing at the current date. Now in terms of the crown, Going back to it, as you saw earlier, it's signed with the logo of the brand and it has this dark finishing right there on the outer end while you have a mixture of stainless steel finishes here on the actual knurling. There's no screw down. So this watch actually comes with 50 meters of water resistance. Right now, this is basically winding the movement. If we move it out, we'll actually be moving the date. So 26, 27, move it all the way out and you've hacked the watch. So you could actually set the time. Pushing back in, there we go. Now in terms of finishes, there are just so many here. Um, it's, it's almost impossible to count. Uh, I'll go over the major ones. Um, top of the lugs are actually brushed, but right here on the edges are polished. The case is a two piece structure where you'll see here on the side, you have your top stainless steel and then you have a coated, dark coated part here on the bottom. The watch is of course a sapphire sandwich, so sapphire on the top, sapphire on the bottom. The bottom coating underneath the lugs is actually polished, um, but there's brushing here on the sides. There are just so many finishes on this watch. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, the light plays on so many surfaces on this watch. And it's almost like you find a new surface every time you look at this thing. And the main case is actually held together by these four screws, but I'm gonna drop an exploded view of one of the watches the brand makes, which looks similar to this. And there's just so much going on here inside of the watch. Um, you have the, the kind of floating movement here within the case. There's just so much going on and it's a level of craftsmanship that um, you rarely see in a watch. So with that being said, we've gone over the specs of the watch. So now let's jump into my thoughts and pricing on the Menaze DeVito. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is truly a lot going on with this watch. That movement which seems to float along with the dial on the inside of the watch 
the different finishes on this watch. Um, the watch is truly a masterpiece in terms of actual quality and just craftsmanship. But I have to say there are a few things about the watch that I wished were changed or I kind of wish were just there on the watch. Um, first thing I have to say is even though there's so many finishes on the watch, especially on the rubber, the watch definitely has this sporty vibe. So I kind of wish that the brand had either given us a screw down crown or maybe bumped it up to 100 meters of water resistance. Other thing here is if you look at the minute hand, you'll see that it fully covers the minute track on this watch, which can be slightly annoying when you're trying to set the time. So a lot of times you're trying to set the time on this watch and short of it being one of the major larger indices, you don't quite know if you're right above the minute that you're looking to set it to. So that that's a little annoying. I won't say it's a huge thing, but when you go to hack the watch and you go to set it, um, yeah, it's one of those things that can be a little annoying depending on when you're trying to set the time on this watch. Next thing I have to say is I, I understand kind of why the indices are painted white. They give a nice sort of contrast to the dial, but I do wish they were loomed. As I stated earlier, the only thing loomed on this watch are just the hour and the minute hand. So when you look at that white on the indices, you're kind of hoping that they're loomed as well, but they're not. They're not. So it, it's, it's one of those things I wish they had done on this design. Those are some of my kind of major negatives, but I have to say overall, um, this is quite a beautiful watch. Um, the dial is stunning. It's really hard to show off, um, even in footage. Um, I'll try to take some pictures which really show, one, the sunburst effect and just that kind of dimple, um, dimpling that they do on the dial. Um, it's a really beautiful thing to see. Um, it's, it's almost like, it, it, it's really hard to describe. You kind of have to see it. Um, it's really hard to describe just how this dial looks. Another thing I love is I know some people are kind of divisive on it, but, and I'm actually gonna move this out so you guys see what I'm talking about a bit more. Um, I actually like how they cut out the date on this watch. It's almost like they're saying, you know what, the date exists below the dial and we're just gonna cut this little piece out of the top so you guys can see the date. Um, the watch in its natural essence is completely without the date, but we're going to just cut out this little piece so you guys can see the date. And that's kind of the vibe that it gets. And it creates this nice real sense of depth. And it makes the idea of the movement being floating um, within the case, it, it, it almost brings you in even closer to that movement. So you, it, it's weird. It reminds you that the movement is indeed floating within the case. Um, and you could see really through me holding the watch like that, you could see the, my table in the background right here on the edges. And it's not even a perfect circle. Um, it's, it's, it's a weird shape. I, it's hard to describe, but it's just a fascinating thing to watch and see on this watch. Um, it, it's, it's truly unique and it's, it's something that I, I've had the watch for a couple weeks now and I have to say it's just a beautiful thing to, to constantly see on this watch. So those are some of my negatives, some of my positives. I uh, have to let everyone know, in terms of pricing for this watch, the watch comes in at about $3,760 um, USD. Um, I know some people might be balking out that, but when you take into account that this the amount of work that goes into this case, 
Yes, I know some people may say, well, it, you know, it's just a 28, 24 movement inside. But really, you're buying this watch for the craftsmanship and the casework, which is extensive. I mean, just to give you guys an idea, you look at the lugs, that's not one piece. There's actually the piece here at the bottom is a, is a piece, but each individual lug is a piece itself, which kind of clamps down and sits on the watch and kind of holds this together and that's what's screwed in here you have these these screws that i mentioned earlier one two three and four and then that each individual lug actually screws into which is just crazy um so when you take all those things into account this is more of just a, a master class in craftsmanship and watch finishing. Um, let me get this on my wrist so you guys kind of see what it looks like on my 7.25 inch wrist. There you go. Actually it looks quite nice. Um, it, as I said earlier, it has that really nice sporty vibe to it. Um, I'll drop some pictures of how this watch looks like on the bracelet so you have an idea too. And if you think the case is a lot of craftsmanship, the bracelet is just ridiculous as well. But guys, that concludes my review of the Manaze DeVito. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, definitely take a look into what the brand is doing. Um, just the amount of craftsmanship and and work that they put into their watches is just amazing. If you ever have an opportunity to see one of these in person, I definitely would say jump at it. Um, overall, as I said, uh, this watch isn't for everyone, um, but it's definitely a piece of art. And for individuals who are looking for something just a bit different in terms of just look, this may be the watch for you. Um, but it, just overall, the watch is just an amazing piece of work. But as I said, guys, thank you for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the review. I'll see you next time. Bye.